that he can give out the little thing there if you do that. What a joy to be here at Parkside Baptist Church and celebrating, I believe it's your 20th anniversary and our church, we just are in our 16th year of hosting a youth conference and we understand the work that goes into it, the sacrifice, uh, uh, the money. And so we appreciate this church and the sacrifice that they make and appreciate uh, the pastors, youth pastors, bringing your young people. And, uh, you know, it wouldn't be an exciting conference if, if you didn't bring your young people. And so we appreciate you bringing them and them being here. And I'm sure that some of them probably... Uh, maybe in the summer, wash some cars or mow some grass or did some things or raise some money uh, to be able to come to youth conference, and we appreciate the sacrifice that they've made. I want to say again, I love Brother Wells and his family as well. Appreciate them very much. Appreciate the nice room, the basket. Appreciate the ride to from the airport here. Appreciate the ride that I'm going to get to go back home. Amen. And uh, what a joy to be here. Uh, you should get a little card. It should say... Uh, please do not what? Okay, you should. Everybody should have one of those. Okay, we're doing good. All right, everybody about got one. Who does not have one? Okay, who does not? Raise your hand. Okay, we still got a few. Okay, all right, everybody get a little card. Keep your hand up there. Ushers will get you. What a joy to be here. I'm excited about your remodeling and all the things you've done lately. Boy, it's beautiful. The preacher took me on a little tour, and I'm excited about that as well. All right. If you have your Bibles, the book of Psalms, the book of Psalms, chapter number 35. The preacher said, I needed to be done about 8.30 to quarter to 9, and I think I can do that, okay? And I appreciate all the time he's given me. He's very gracious with his time, all right? Okay, just kidding there, just kidding, just kidding, just checking you out. Does any young person that was here this morning, does, can any young person remember what I preached about? Could you raise your hand, okay? All right, so what did I preach about? Um, the warning, or the warning of delay. The, the warning of delay, good, good, good job. Got something for you, okay? Give him a hand, all right? I'm cheap tonight, son. I am cheap, okay? Can you give me one of the points? Boy, excellent. Come, I got a little something here for you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to double it up here, okay? I'm going to double it up there. All right, would you get that? Okay, all right. Right here, right here in the top. What you going to tell me? I haven't asked a question, but what you going to tell me? <laughs> You going to give me a point? Well, good. Do that. Stan, give me a point. Go to now. Go to now. Oh, okay, come here. I got something for you. This is the end, okay? This conference has broke me, okay? All right. There you go. God bless you. All right. Give them a hand. All right. If you, uh, did I say Psalms 35? If you don't mind, hey, young man, look. If you could get some change and bring me back nine of that, okay? I'm, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. All right, Psalms 35. Psalms 35. If you're there, would you stand with us? Psalms 35. What a joy to be here. And uh, looking forward to our next speaker tonight. We'll be praying for him. Psalms 35. I just got to stop. Everybody all right? All right. Psalms 35. Look with me if you would. At verse number 23. Psalms 35, and look at verse 23. The Bible says, Stir what? Up. Stir up. What does it say? The last word? <laughs> Thyself, and awake to my judgment, even unto my cause, my God in my Lord. If you would, hold your place there. Go to 2 Timothy chapter number 1. The book of 2 Timothy. Chapter number 1, the book of 2 Timothy, chapter number 1, and look with me, if you would, at verse number 6. 2 Timothy, chapter number 1, and look at verse number 6. The Bible says, Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou, what? Stir up the, what? The gift of God, which is in thee by the putting on 
of my hands. Go to 2 Peter, if you would. 2 Peter chapter number 1. The book of 2 Peter. 2 Peter chapter number 1. 2 Peter chapter number 1. And if you would, look with me. 2 Peter chapter number 1. Look at verse number 13. The Bible says, Yea, I think it meet as long as I am in this tabernacle to what? To stir you up by what? The putting on, the putting you in remembrance. Notice, to stir you up by putting you in remembrance. Look at chapter 3. 2 Peter chapter number 3. Look at 2 Peter chapter number 3. And look at verse number 1. This second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you, in both which I what? Stir up your what? Pure minds by way of remembrance. If you would, let's go back to Psalms 35. Really quickly, Psalms chapter 35. Let's just go back. I'm not going to have time to go back and read all the verses again. But let's go back to where we started, Psalms 35, and look at verse 23. The Bible says, stir what? Up. What does it say? Thyself. Thyself. Father, we love you. We thank you for loving us. We thank you for this great church. And Lord, it's so encouraging and exciting to see what you are doing here. Thank you for this conference. Thank you for those who have no doubt driven a long way. And as folks return, I pray you give safety. But Father, we're needy people. And God, I pray that you'd meet with us tonight. And uh, Lord, we thank you for all the good preaching that's been done. And, uh, but Lord, we just pray now for the next few minutes that you would meet with us in a real special way. Father, we're going to thank you for it. In Jesus' name, we do pray and ask it all. Amen. You may be seated. I appreciate that. All right. Uh, the word stir, the Bible says, uh, I, I stir you up by way of remembrance. Okay? The word stir you up. Stir up thyself. It said several different ways. What does this mean? What is this talking about? Stir uh, up thyself. The word stir, listen carefully. You'll miss the whole message. The word stir means to move. It means to change place in any manner. It means to uh, arise. It means to put into action. It means to make more lively. Stir up thyself. Second Timothy chapter 1. Stir up the gift of God. Second Peter chapter 1 13. To stir you up. In other words, I want to put you in action. I want to make you more lively. Okay? So, so what is this basically saying? This thing about I want to stir you up. Okay? Uh, I want to make you more lively. What it means is to be called into action to be called stay with me now to be called in to action okay i want to stir you up. i want to call you in to i want to make you more lively okay so here we are tonight some of us we come to a conference like this and we have a sign that we are wearing and, and the sign says, please do not disturb. How many of you young people love to sleep in? Would you raise your hand? Okay. Don't lie now. Don't lie. You lie in church. God may kill you. All right. All right. Put your hands down. Okay. A lot of folks like sleeping in. Can I get a witness, young people? And so what, what happens when mom or dad come in the room and say, okay, it's time, to, it's time to get up. They're trying to stir you up. They're trying to, trying to get you into motion. They're trying to get you into action. But what do you do sometimes? You know, you get home and, you know, you drove a long ways here. You've been up late and you have preaching in the morning and activities in the afternoon and preaching at night. And time you get home, you're going to be tired. You're going to be wore out. And mom and dad are going to come to the room and they're going to say all right it's time to get up they're going to try to stir you up so i gave you that little sign to bring home with you to put on your door that you, you say please do not disturb yeah. 
You do know I am kidding, okay? You do know that, all right? But you know, I, I, I preached enough. There always seems to be some young people who have this spirit upon them. Now, you, you can't see it. They're, they're not wearing it around their neck. But sometimes we as preachers, we can sense it. Sometimes when you preach it, you just kind of look out there and you see one over here and you see one over there and you see one back there. And they got this attitude and they got this spirit is, you know, hey, just, you know, please do not disturb. This is my life, and I, I, I want to do what I want to do with my life, and just please do not disturb. Can I get a witness? So I'm just going to give you some things really quickly here. Number one, some of us, when it comes to God's will, we have this sign, please do not disturb. Some of us tonight, God may be calling you to the mission field, but you got this sign that says, please do not disturb. God may be calling some young man here tonight to, to be a preacher, but you got this sign that says, please do not disturb. Can I get a witness? Are you listening? It was, uh, I was 21 years old. Brother James Crompton came to preach at Temple Baptist Church. And I had this sign around my neck. Now, not literally, but inside of my heart, I was very satisfied where I was. But something happened in that service that night. God got a hold of my heart. Are you still with me? God got a hold of my heart. And, and that night during the invitation, Brother Crompton said, this was the invitation. He said, if you're willing to do whatever God wants you to do, I want you to stand. And I'll never forget that night. I stood to my feet. You know what I did? I took my please do not disturb sign off and I said God I'll be willing to do whatever you want me to do now I know that what kind of preaching you've been hearing this week and, I, and I'm sure that many of you have come and you've made decisions for God and, and I, I'm thankful for that but there always seems to be a few that are holding on to the please do not disturb when it comes to the will of God. You know, God called Abraham in Genesis chapter number 12, and, and God called Abraham to leave the Ur of the Chaldeans, and, and God led Abraham to what we now call Israel, to, that we call the land flowing of milk and honey. We call it the promised land. You know, I am glad that Abraham did not have this sign on when God called him, that Abraham was willing to do the will of God. Some of us tonight, when it comes to the will of God, you have this sign on, please do not disturb. The preacher said it this morning. Young people, listen to me. There's nothing like doing the will of God for your life. I'm just being honest with you. I'm not miserable. I get around preachers and they're complaining about the church and, and they're complaining about the ministry. This preacher doesn't do that. But I'm just being honest with you. I really do love the ministry. I really do love serving God. I, I really do enjoy preaching. Listen to me. I really enjoy being in the will of God. I'm not wondering if I'm in the will of God. I'm not hoping I'm in the will of God. As sure as I know I'm saved, I know I'm fulfilling the will of God for my life. And there's nothing like that in all the world to realize you're doing what Creator God, my friend, wants you to do with your life. I don't care how much money you make in life. I don't care how popular you come, how famous you become. You'll never be content. You'll never have peace and joy if you do not do God's will for your life. Now, I don't know what God's will is for your life, but you ought to be willing to do what God wants you to do. But some of us in this room have this sign around our neck Please do not disturb. Number two, some of you, when it comes to serving the Lord, you have this sign that says, please do not disturb. You know, I have a really concern tonight in our churches. And uh, some places where I go and, and preach, I notice a lot of times, and, and I'm sure it's not true in a lot of churches that are here in this conference, but I see it in a lot of places I go that, my friend, most of the people that are doing most of the work in most churches is the older people. Now, I don't know who's cleaning the, ch the, the, the church at your church. I don't know who's mowing the grass. And, but my friend, a lot of times you've got a 65 or 70-year-old man and a 65 and a 70-year-old lady. They're, 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 they're out there mowing the grass or cleaning the building while the young people are in there on their phone. 
You know, we need some young people to leave here and go back home and get involved in your local church and begin to help your pastor, begin to help your youth pastor. But my friend, you've got this sign that around your neck that says, please do not disturb. Boy, we need some young people that'll get involved and begin to serve the Lord like never before. Hey, we have never needed young people more than now. And I realize I'm preaching maybe to the choir. A lot of you that are here, uh, that, that's why you're here. And you wanted to come and you wanted to be here. But may I encourage you tonight, if some of you are not involved, why don't you go to your pastor and say, Preacher, the, the preacher was preaching this message about getting involved in the church. Is there something I can do? Now, if the preacher says, no, I do not have anything to do, call me. I told my staff, I said, if I ever ask you, you got, you got anything to do? And they say, no, I don't have anything to do. You're fired. Go, hey, there's, there's six, seven billion people on planet Earth. Until they're all saved, we always have something to do. So I submit to you tonight, some of us when it comes to God's will, it's please do not disturb. Some of us when it comes to serving God, please do not disturb. Going to get a little tight now. Some of us when it comes to separation from the world. You know, now just, just leave that alone. Please do not disturb. You know, the Bible says, go to Romans chapter 12. We could all quote this verse, one of the most known verses in all the Bible, but go to Romans chapter number 12. Let's just stop. Let's just pause. What am I preaching about tonight? Anybody know what I'm preaching about? What I'm preaching about? Right there. What am I preaching about? Tell me what I'm preaching. Boy, that's the first point. Excellent, okay? But what, I, what I'm preaching about, the, I, I showed you the word in the Bible over and over where the Bible talks about being stirred, right? You know, stir up thyself, okay? In other words, God wants us to go in motion, but some of us are asleep, and we're not, we got this sign around our neck when it comes to the will of God, when it comes to getting involved in the church, and we're very content where we are and what we're saying with our attitude and our spirit, and sometimes with our words, we're saying, just leave me alone. I'm okay where I'm at. You follow me now? Some of us, when it comes from separation from the world, we have this, please do not disturb. Look at Romans chapter number 12. The book of Romans chapter number 12. Look at verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body a what? A living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not what? Conformed to this world, but be you what? You know, the, the Bible's got a lot. You know, the Bible says this. If any man loved the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Are you listening to me? It doesn't mean a person is lost. Now, I'm just simply saying, if you cannot love God and the world at the same time. Matter of fact, James says it this way. He says, whosoever be a friendship with the world is that enmity with God. That's very powerful. And one of the things that's really affecting our churches and that I, I battle at with my own church is, is world and it's just creeping in. And, and I fear sometimes a conference like this where there's old-fashioned preaching on, you know, separation from the world that a lot of people don't want to hear that so we're watering it down and we're compromising. That, that is not the direction. Some of us, when it comes to the movies, help me out. And, and I said this the other day at my church. I said, a lot of our young people, they know who Iron Man is. They know who Spider-Man is. They know who Superman is. They, they know who Spider-Man is. But they don't know who Matthew, Mark, and John is. They don't know Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, uh, James, Peter, and John. Or, or they don't know who Job is. They don't know who Joan is. Come on, smile. Help me out. Some of us, when it comes to our music, we got this sign, please do not disturb. You say, oh, these young people, you know, all of these young people are listening to the right kind of music, and all these young people are separated from the world. You would be surprised. Are y'all still with me tonight? Some of us, when it comes to the way we dress, please, do, hey, please don't go there. 
Please do not disturb. Some of us, listen, are, are getting on the iPhone and some of us are looking at things we shouldn't be looking at. Some of us is running with the wrong crowd. And I'm just simply saying tonight, my friend, some of us, God is trying to deal with your heart about things that is in your life that shouldn't be there. And, and hey, every time the preacher gets up, the youth pastor gets up, hey, the pastor gets up, you get this attitude, you get this spirit. Because you got this sign that says, please do not disturb. Leave me alone. I said, number one, some of us when it comes to the will of God. I said, number two, some of us when it comes to serving the Lord. Hey, some of us when it comes separation from the world. Number four, some of us when it comes to sin. Go with me to Psalms chapter number 19. Some of us when it comes to sin. Some of us have some secret sins in our lives. Some of us have some besetting sins in our lives. Some of us have some things in our lives that shouldn't be there. And, and the Lord begins to deal with our heart. And we got this sign that says, please do not disturb. Look in Psalms 19 and verse 12. Hey, who can understand his errors? Cleanse thou me from what? I'm not concerned about the things sometimes maybe I'm seeing that my young people are doing in the church. Sometimes I'm concerned about the things I'm not seeing that they're doing in the church. See, some of us tonight has got some secrets going on. Some of us are texting boys when mom and dad don't want you to do that. Some of us are texting girls when mom and dad don't want you to do that. And I'm saying some of you are doing things that you know that mom and dad doesn't want you to do that. But, you know, you're secretly going around and you're doing these things. And whenever the preacher gets up or the youth pastor gets up and he begins to preach these things and say, you know, you need to honor your mom and dad. Hey, you need to obey your mom and dad. You begin to roll your eyes. You get this spirit. You get this attitude that says, please do not disturb. Are y'all still with me so far? Some of us tonight, when it comes to certain hurt, we have this sign around our neck that says, please do not disturb. Go with me, if you would, to the book of Jeremiah, chapter number 10. Now, this is this introduction. I'm trying my best to get to the sermon, okay? But look in Jeremiah, chapter number 10, and look with me at verse 19. The Bible says, woe is me, for my hurt, my wound is grievous. But I said, truly, this is a grief, and I must bear it. I think my preaching has changed a little bit. Maybe I'm still a little hard on young people. I don't think I'm as hard as I used to be. You know, the older you get, the more you see. And you see a lot of things that young people go through. My wife and I, we have nine children. We, we've had 14 foster children in our home. We have three in our home right now. And one thing I, we, we've noticed has just been foster parents and you know, bringing these little children in our home and just, I, I can't go there, just maybe live stream, but this, it's just unbelievable of things that these young people go through. It would just, it would just melt your heart. It would just break your heart. We had, we had one young man in our home. He was, I think, seven years old. And he looked at my wife and he said to my wife, he said, uh, my wife always calls me preacher, even at home she calls me preacher. And, uh, and, and, and she, uh, uh, the young man said to my wife, he said, does the does preacher, does he hit you? And my wife says, well, no. He's never hit me. He said, do you and your husband fight and hit each other? Do, do y'all, do y'all, do you and the preacher, do y'all ever fight and hit each other? Do y'all ever do any of that? And then it dawned on my wife why he was asking the question. Do you, you know why he's asking the question? Because that's what he grew up with. That's what he's seen. That's all he's known. Some of us in this room tonight, your mom and dad got divorced. And when you hear the word divorce, poof, there it all is right there in your face. And you go like, preacher, please don't disturb. Please don't even go there. Now listen to me careful. It wasn't your fault what your mom and dad did. How could it be a 10-year-old's fault that mom and dad get a divorce or a teenager? Are you still with me? But you're in the middle of it. 
What do you do with a young person who loves mama? When we was growing up, sometimes we would say, who do you love the most, mama or daddy? How do you answer that? You know what we always said? We love them the same. Right? Some of you tonight, it is not that you don't want to really do the will of God. It is not that you want to be rebellious necessarily. It is not necessarily that maybe you even want to be worldly. I, I, I fear that some of you young people in this room, it, it's not really that you want to go the way of the world and get into sin and not that you really want to serve God. But what has happened, the devil is using the hurt in your life. And, 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 and you're not, you, you got this sign up that says, please do not disturb Young people, you got to get help. You got to get over that. You got to realize tonight that God still loves you and God is still in control. And I don't have it all figured out, and I don't know why God allows certain things that comes in our life. I, I know, I know, I, I, you can say it how you want to, but hey, God used, hey, Joseph's brothers, they hated him, they sold him. He, he, went to, uh, he, he went to jail, something he didn't do. You know the life of Joseph, but you know, at the end there, you know what Joseph said? Hey, y'all meant this for my bad. Hey, but God turned it out for our good. You know, we serve a God that is so big and so wise and so powerful that can take the hurts of our life and turn it around and it actually become a strength. Some of you young ladies or maybe even young men has been sexually touched and things has happened in your life and you're like, whatever you do, please don't disturb. I got a lady in my church. Preacher, this is, this is true. This, this is the truth. Her dad was a pastor, and he was a gospel singer and traveled all over the country. And finally, she came to me, and she said, I cannot stand it no longer. My dad is a preacher. My dad is up singing gospel music, and when I look at him, it just turns my stomach knowing all the things that he did to me. And then I get up, and I'm preaching a sermon like this, and I talk about being sexually molested. She'll begin to weep and sometimes get up and walk out of the service, not in disrespect to me, not being ugly to me, but she's like, please don't go there. Are you following me? But young people, whatever you've been through in your life, I'm just telling you, greater is he that is in you than he that's in the world. I mean, the Bible says, hey, I can do all things through Christ with strength in me. I'm simply saying we have a God that is so big and so wise. Listen, young people, he does love you. He does love you. He does love you. He will always love you. The devil's a liar. And so tonight you have to please do not disturb. Why? It's because really, and you don't mean to be, but you're really upset with the Lord. So in your heart, you're like, leave me alone. I'm not worried about doing your will. I'm going to do what I want to. You still with me tonight? Some of us tonight, because of our hurts and things that we've been through, we have this sign that says, please do not disturb. Some of us, when it comes to salvation, I know some of you have been saved already and, and one got saved this morning, but there may be one or two here still that needs to get saved. But you have this sign. Listen to me. If you're not sh for sure that you're saved, get it settled tonight. Just get it settled tonight. But here's the message. You need to be brief. Why is that, preacher? Why is it that some of us tonight have this sign uh, on us that says, please do not disturb. Number one, some of it, it's just the nature of Adam. It's the nature of Adam. Now, I'm not getting eight, no amens there. But I, I've read my Bible. I've read Romans 6, and I read it every day. I've read it every day of my life, seven days a week for the last at least 30-plus years, every single day. So I have read Romans Verse 7, for he that is dead is freed from sin. Yep. 
Hey, sin shall not have dominion over you. But here is the truth. I've also read Romans chapter 7. And Paul said, man, the, the things I, I ought to be doing, I'm not doing. The things I shouldn't do, sometimes I do. And man, he says, oh, wretched man that I am. But I also read Romans chapter number 8, amen? You see there in Romans 6, you see the struggle in Romans 7. But let's get over there in Romans chapter 8. Listen, young people, when you got saved, when you accepted Christ, the Holy Spirit came inside of you. Are you still with me? But that old man is still there. He is still there. And my friend, you've got to yield to the Holy Spirit and let God have his way. You've got to deny self. Dr. Lee Robertson used to say it this way. You know, one of the main things in our life is you've got to deny self. Why? Because this old sinful uh, nature that we have, uh, that we got from Adam, you've got to deny it every day. Hello? We got this old nature of Adam, but hey, greater is he that is in you than he that's in the world. Some of us tonight, you remember Jonah? God told Jonah to go down to Nineveh and preach, but you know, Jonah was fast asleep. Jonah had this sign that said, please do not disturb. And I'm telling you, Jonah was so stubborn. Jonah was so mad. They said, now Jonah... Jonah said, now look, I'm going to tell you why, why we have this, this uh, storm. It's because of me. Because God told me to go to Nineveh and cry out against it, and I don't want to go. I'd rather God destroy that crowd. And so they said, like, man. They said, you need to get right. I'm not getting right. They're going to throw Jonah. One, you're going to get right? No. Two, you're going to get right? No. Three, and there he goes. After three days and three nights, then Jonah prayed. You still with me? If you're familiar with the book of Jonah, Jonah was angry. Jonah was angry. That man had anger issues. And some of, we may have just one young person or, or two young people in this whole room, but you have the do not disturb sign on tonight. Why? Because you're angry. You may be angry at your mom. You may be angry at your dad. You may be angry at the divorce. You may be angry at the preacher. You may be angry at, at somebody, but you are angry. Boy, you got to deal with that anger. Are you with me tonight? Some of us tonight, and I think really this is one of the main problems. We got two or three, maybe you're sitting together. Now, I don't know you, but if I was preaching to my my young people tonight, I would know where they would be and who they would be. And sometimes you got two or three young people sitting together. Sometimes it's maybe four or five. And they got this sign, do not disturb on. And what they're waiting on, they're going to see what the other one's going to do. And if the other one, if, if, if he comes and he puts his do not disturb on the altar, then you'll come. You know what, tonight, you should not allow what somebody else is going to do stopping you from doing what God wants you to do. You're looking at somebody else. You're following somebody else. Listen to me tonight. We need some young men that are like a Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that doesn't matter what anybody else does. You're not going to let your friends influence you. But you're going to turn around. You're going to be looking and you're going to see. Oh, if they go, I'll go. Why don't you tonight stand alone? Amen. The night I got saved, I was sitting. I don't know why it was that way because no, it never happened that way. But this particular night during a revival meeting, I was sitting right in the middle. One of my friends was on the left. My best friend was on the right. The preacher got up and preached the word of God. I got on the Holy Ghost conviction. I realized I was lost. I realized I was going to hell. The invitation was given. I nearly ran down that altar. You know what both of them did? They sat there. They didn't move an inch, but I didn't care. I wasn't going to go to hell for them. I wasn't going to go to hell for nobody else. My friend, the greatest decision I ever made was 41 years ago on a Thursday night when I received Christ as my Savior. But you're going to be looking around and saying, you know, and you girls do this too, by the way. 
You girls look around and you're going to see what your friends can do. God give us some young people who's willing to move regardless of what anybody else does. There's another reason we don't want to take this side. The devil. Y'all believe there's a real devil? Well, three of us do. There is a real devil. The Bible says be vigilant, be sober. Because he walks about seeking who may devour. You know, while I'm preaching, he's preaching. Oh, we're in a spiritual battle. And hey, hey, the devil's talking to you. The devil, hey, there's no doubt Monday or Tuesday and and Tuesday, uh, Wednesday morning and Wednesday night and and this one that God has been dealing with some of you. But the devil's just said, no, no, don't you you mess this thing up. Hello. Man, there's the old flesh that would try to stop you. There are anger issues. You're angry at somebody that, that will stop you. There's, a, there's the wrong crowd or the wrong friends that will try to stop you. There's a lot of things. Are you still? Some of us fear. Some of us is just afraid. Now, I, I think maybe that was one of my issues. I'm not sure. But God worked on my heart for nine months to be a preacher. For nine months. I wish I had the time to tell you the story. But when God began to deal with my heart, this is the truth. I was like, Lord, you, this time, you really had the wrong person. Man, I was just so shy. I, don't, I guess that's the word. And, I mean, I'm just thinking about you talking about, I'm going to get up and actually say something in front of people? And they're going to be looking at me? You've got to be kidding. Man, I, I was like, no way. And on top of that, now this young man here, Brother Caleb, you know, he's educated. You hear him preach? He can use words. I'm sitting there with my dictionary thinking, man. And I love that. That's not a criticism. That is a prank, and I mean that. I wish I had that kind of vocabulary. I do not. We were sitting eating today, me and Brother Ray. Remember we were sitting at the table? And, and, and I said to Brother Ray, I said, you need to write a letter. And he looked at me, he said, I need to write what? I said, a letter. He said, you, he was just laughing, you know, because I said ladder, like climbing. <laughs> so he was rolling. Man, I do that stuff all the time. I realize I have very poor English. Okay? But I'm not going to let that stop me from doing what God has called me to do. There's another man in the Bible that said he was slow of tongue when God called him. But my friend, God used Moses. And if God used Moses, God can use me and God can use you. He said, well, I can't preach like you, Brother Carr. Listen to me. It ain't about a style. It's not about a delivery. It's not about a personality. It's about a yielded vessel to the Holy Spirit of God. Stop plugging into personalities. It's not how funny you are, how good you can tell a joke, how much you can move around. It's about you just being yielded to God. Jonathan Edwards got up and read his sermon. You ever think how boring that would seem to be? But I'll tell you one thing, buddy. It made it to the public school history book. Now, they got it probably out of there now, but hey, it was called the Great Awakening. I read about it when I was in public school. Now, I got saved. I got out of there. Help me out. Jonathan Edwards just stood there and read the sermon with a candlelight, and people began to scream and cry cry out for mercy and and it was religious people getting saved are y'all with me so you're here tonight and you're saying preacher I agree with all that stuff but and I want to do what God wants me to do but I'm just scared and hey hey God has not given us the spirit of fear that ain't coming from God then it's got to be coming from somewhere the devil's just trying to use fear to hinder you some of us tonight is unbelief. The Bible says the children of Israel in Hebrews chapter 3 and verse 19, it says they could not enter in because of their what? Help me out, because of what? 
So the children of Israel could not go into the promised land because they was listening to rock music. Is that what it says? No, they didn't have it then, at least a version of it that we have now. It wasn't their iPhone or their iPad that kept them out. It wasn't really even fear. It really wasn't even their hurt. It really wasn't even their worldliness. It was their unbelief. You know, we got to trust God. You know what pleases God is faith. I don't have a lot. Of, I'm not telling you I have a lot of faith. But there, when I go to preach or whatever, I just say, Lord, I don't have all the talent. No, I just got to trust you. Right. You got to believe God and trust God. Just like when you got saved. That's, the Bible says, as you have therefore received him, so walk ye in him. Sure. Could you imagine tonight if Noah would have had the sign, please do not disturb. You wouldn't be here. Could you imagine if Abraham would have had the sign, please do not disturb? Could you imagine if Brother Wells tonight would have had the sign on his heart, please do not disturb? How many people would be lost? Are y'all with me? So you don't know what God may do with your life if you'll take the sign off. What if Jesus? would have had the sign please do not disturb if I read the Bible right and I'm not trying to get in a theological super deep thought here but the Bible says God sent him into the world I know Jesus was God and I don't have all that figured out I just know what the Bible says but I'm glad when God the Father looked at God the Son and said son I need you to go that God the Son was willing to step out of heaven and step inside of a womb of a virgin woman and stayed there for nine months and was delivered without sin. And then he lived a sinless life. He never sinned one single time. And he went to Calvary's cross and he died for me and you. He took our sins upon his own body. And when Jesus died, he was buried and put in a borrowed tomb. I said a borrowed tomb. In 72 hours, three days, and three nights, Jesus rose again. You would be on your way to hell. Everybody that would ever live and die would be on their way to hell if Jesus would not have been willing to come. You know, theologically, that would have been impossible if you would. But I'm just simply saying, I'm glad that Jesus in the garden said, Not my will be done, but thy will. What was he doing? I'm not saying he ever had the sign on, okay? But Jesus was willing to do what the Father wanted him to do. All I'm asking you tonight, I don't know why some of you young people's got this shield up and you got that sign in your heart. And it doesn't matter who preaches and what's preached. It's just the same response. Please do not disturb. I don't know if it's your hurt. I don't know if it's your anger. I don't know if it's just your flesh. I don't know if it's your unbelief. I don't know if it's your fear. Uh, I don't know if it, you're waiting on some friend to make a decision. But tonight, but tonight, I wonder who would be willing to come and say by putting that sign that says, please not disturb. Now listen, when you do that, what you're just simply saying to God, God, I am willing simply to do whatever you want me to do. Is that fair enough? Would you be willing to say, okay, Lord, I'm willing to do whatever you want me to do. I was 21 years old when I laid mine down. Some of you could be way ahead of me if you would make that decision tonight. What could God do in this room if every young person meant business, not for show, not for whatever somebody may be thinking, but simply in your heart, you're saying, I've done this long enough. I've done it long enough. It's time for me to be stirred up into action. My dad was an alcoholic. My dad was a drunk. 
My, Carl Hatch led my dad to the Lord. But I, I had some anger issues, some hurt issues toward my dad. And I got saved and got in church. and God, God took care of that. Are you with me tonight? And young people, if God could take care of my hurts, God can take care of your hurts. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed tonight.